John Sweeney, tell me all about your podcast. The podcast is called Hunting Galen, and it's an attempt to understand what the hell happened when a, a rich, uh, a beautiful young woman called Galen Maxwell fell in love and then became a servant to one of one of the nastiest, creepiest, and I think most evil men on earth. He was called Jeffrey Epstein, and he was a multimillionaire, and he was a paedophile. What he liked was girls who were just pro post puberty, like 14, 15, 16, who were um, um, young, poor, from the wrong side of the tracks in America, the phrase, and I don't like the phrase, but the phrase is trailer trash. And, and basically Ghislaine Maxwell became his pimp, his procurer. And Epstein liked having sex, sexualized massages from these girls like three times a day. So this meant that he, he would, I mean, this was a kind of abuse of girls who were more children than women on an industrial basis. And Ghislaine Maxwell organised it. And, it, you know, it, it shouldn't be overlooked that she certainly wasn't trailer trash that got bought in by Epstein. She was the daughter of one of the <laughs> richest men on the planet. Yeah. So the, what's strange, what's so sad about this, Stu, and there is, an, there is an element of tragedy, is that her father, Robert Maxwell, was a monster. And what happened was that she lost one mon monster when he died, and then she found a fresh monster. And, and the thing about both monsters is that they were enormously rich and they could provide helicopter rides and in intros to fancy parties, tickets on Concord, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The only thing she had to do for the second monster was feed him fresh children. It's really dark. But the tragedy is that there is strong evidence that she was psychologically and emotionally abused by her father, Robert Maxwell. And possibility that she was also sexually abused by him too. Uh, the evidence is, is not clear and uh, her PR people have 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 kind of denied this by uh, by not engaging with it, but but giving a general dismissal. But basically, the whole podcast. But but it's absolutely true to say that Robert Maxwell was a monster, and then people who challenged him, for example, my old friend, my friend Richard Ingram, who's an old guy now, but was the editor of Private Eye, and he was sued by Robert Maxwell more times than he cares. Uh, to remember what happened with Maxwell was he was born a very poor Jewish kid. He managed to escape um, his native Czechoslovakia before the Nazis invaded. He ended up fighting with the British and he was a brave and good soldier. But also there's some evidence and it's good evidence that he committed war crimes at the end. And the, and, and the, the source is Robert Maxwell in his own book. Uh, he committed war crimes by killing um, Germans when they were surrendering. Um, then he goes on to be an incredibly successful uh, businessman, printer, publisher, but actually he was a crook as well. And towards the end, he, uh, he bet too much um, on a business that didn't work in the States and started stealing from the Mirror Pension Fund and other pension funds he controlled so that he could use this money essentially to, to buy shares in his companies, which were tanking. And faced with, faced with destruction, faced with absolute ruin and shame, the, he, he, well, what happened was he fell off his yacht. Was he pushed? Was he murdered? Did he jump? My belief is that it was either an accident or more likely that he did jump because, uh, and then he had, uh, um, uh, second thoughts about it, but it was too late and he slipped into the Atlantic where he drowned. But everybody who knows Robert Maxwell says that he was an incredible bully. He was 
horrible to people. He would he would ruin or destroy and bully minor executives for his own amusement, uh, and he would treat everybody like shit. And the person he's got um, nine kids, and the the person who was best able to charm him was the youngest, his pride and joy, his daughter Gillen. And there's something creepy, Stu, about the relationship between Robert Maxwell and Gillem and between, for example, Donald Trump and Ivanka. It's that kind of powerful daddy. Daddy gets bored with his wife because she's no longer um, the beauty she was, but nor is he, obviously. And then he kind of starts using his daughter as a social escort to posh dinners in London and New York and so forth and so on. But wit there are witnesses who used to work, for example, on the Daily Mirror because Maxwell was the owner of the Daily Mirror and, 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 and interfered with the paper horribly. But these witnesses say that the relationship between um, Robert Maxwell and Ghislaine Maxwell was, was revolting. It was a kind of, she would, she would play Hello Sugar Daddy with him and then he'd give her some toys, give her a, a free BMW, helicopter rides, uh, uh, stuff like this. And then every now and then she would burst into tears because he'd been horrible to her. So it was a horribly abusive relationship. He dies. Then she goes to the States. And, and she makes, she uses the power of her social introductions and she's a charming and beautiful woman. But she's, to, to, to create a circle of friends for Jeffrey Epstein, and they include President, outgoing President, um, um, the, um, oh gosh, I've gotten his name, because I, I'm actually, in, people should know that I'm Kiev, so I'm thinking about Kiev Air Raid. What's Clinton? There we go, sorry, my brain's come back. So she becomes great friends with Bill Clinton, with Donald Trump, a president that was, a president to be, and the second son of the Queen of England, Prince Andrew. And at one point, all of these people are in the, the circle of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Hidden from view, and I don't believe those three men and many others knew about what was going on behind the curtains, but behind the curtains, Ghislaine and other women were providing a kind of conveyor belt of 14, 15 year old girls who were effectively sexually abused by Epstein. And there was a trial, um, actually I did the podcast before the trial in the States, but the trial jury found her guilty and she's now serving something like what's going to be a 20 year sentence. She's 60, so she may not get out until she's 80. She's appealing both the, uh, the um, uh, the conviction and the sentencing, and um, we'll see how that pans out. But at the moment, she's locked away in prison. And I do feel sorry for her because her father was a monster. However, I also feel, having sat through the court case and watched her not very good lawyers try to destroy the characters of the four women witnesses who gave evidence against her, I thought she put them through a horrible experience for no good purpose. And that she didn't offer any defense. And so although I feel sorry for her, I do feel she'll be in prison as a kind of human being. I worry about her being in prison, about the length of her sentence, that's true. But also the other thing, she did great harm to these kids and she abused her boyfriend's immense wealth. And she got something like $30 million out of it. So the great question, for her family who support her is, and the friends who support her, but there aren't that many of them who are vocal these days, is why did you think Jeffrey Epstein gave, gave, gave Maxwell $30 million if it wasn't for helping him state his disgusting lust? Yeah. John, as an investigative journalist, how do you choose which cases you're going to dedicate so much time and focus on? Well, so at the moment I'm in Kiev and I'm, I'm just focusing on, on Russia and Putin and 
and the Russian killing machine. Um, and that's absorbing my interest completely now. Um, but I knew, what, I was on the Observer in the, um, uh, in the 80s too. By the way, one of the things Robert Maxwell did was that when he used to use his helipad on the top of the mirror building, he would often, if he was landing the helicopter, he would just go for a piss off the side of the mirror building. <laughs> and I was a freelance, I was a young fr freelance reporter on Fleet Street. So it's quite possible Robert Maxwell pissed on me. And we, <laughs> I think the reason why I'm bored. Is it's it's exactly funny. the reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always in trouble. I'm worried about Russian rockets falling on my head right now because I'm bald. And uh, back in the day, I was pissed on by Robert Maxwell, perhaps. <laughs> but, um, the, uh, but I knew from my, I didn't work for the Mirror, but I knew from my friends on the Mirror and the Observer and the Mirror journalists kind of got on very well because we're both kind of liberal left of centre kind of thing. I knew that Robert Maxwell was a monster. And the moment that um, she went missing, I thought, listen, I can do a podcast about this. I can do a podcast about this because I know there is not just a story of Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, which was all the Americans were writing about and reporting on. There was a story about why did this happen? Because I'm fascinated by people, and in particular, what kind of childhood they had. What was their mum and dad like? I always want to know. When, when I get to know somebody properly or when I write a book about something, and the tragedy with Ghislaine Maxwell was her father was such a monster. And this is after I'd left the BBC and I was, um, basically, I left the BBC in a, an embarrassing and difficult way. I felt a bit betrayed and humiliated by them. They were irritated with me drinking too much, but I was investigating a Nazi. And, and you can't meet these people over a glass of mineral water in the meeting room. Never mind that. So I say, I know what I can do. I can tell this story in a podcast. And uh, it was commissioned uh, by Global. Um, thanks very much, Global. And and off I went. And I can remember it hit number one on the Apple podcast chart on the trailer alone. And I texted my son and my kids, my son and my daughter have been worried about me after I left the BBC. And I said, Sam, it's number one on the trailer alone. And he texted me back saying, of course it is. <laughs> Fantastic. So I knew... <clears throat> I knew I had a story and I had a uh, an angle which the Americans didn't have, which was there was something wrong, I mean, colossally wrong with Glenn Maxwell long before she met Jeffrey Epstein. John, can you t tell me a little bit, uh, you know, as, as a journalist that, you know, you, you was talking about where you was working throughout the 80s and 90s, tell me a little bit how... The, the kind of world of, of, of podcasting and, and, and audio books has, has impacted on, on, on you as a journalist? Well, so I'm, I, I love podcasts because I'm a natural storyteller. I would say that I've got a kind of gift. If God exists and, you know, that's open to doubt. <laughs> but I'm, certainly when people are trying to kill me, I'm, I, I become more less of an atheist and more of a bad Catholic. And I'm, I'm, I'm towards the bad Catholic end of the wave band. Um, but um, I love telling stories. I think I think my grandfather, my mum's dad, my grandfather died laughing at somebody else's joke. That for me is the perfect way of going. Absolutely. And, and I'm a storyteller. And the best stories are stories power and money don't want told. But also the other thing is that there is something about a podcast, whereas a natural flow of conversation. It's as if you're talking to a friend or somebody you've, you've met but you like and you're telling them the story of this, of, of, for example, Ghislaine Maxwell, but also every now and then you stop to have another, buy another beer, uh, buy some crisps, um, just to... And, and, and so the storytelling, it, I think storytelling in podcast form is more natural than anything else. The, and, and so I write books, and I make television documentaries, but actually the purest form of storytelling is a podcast because you have some structure and some music maybe and some, and some um, scripting, but also you have ordinary everyday conversation. And, um, and Ruth, my 
uh, my co-host, um, who's a woman that's very good. So whenever I was in danger of, 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 of tripping over the fence into something which might sound misogynistic, Ruth was there to, uh, to say, oi, uh, come back here. Um, and, uh, and, and also as a woman, I think was uh, able to sort of to balance out some of the, uh, they balance things out uh, across the piece, but also she would say, so how does this work, John? And then I would try and explain um, what's going on, as it were. But there is the, the sheer pleasure of, of explaining to people sometimes a really complicated story with lots of twists and turns and lots of kind of rabbit holes. Now, in a television documentary, so I used to do panoramas, some of which were 30 minutes long, there were no rabbit holes could be could be chased down because you just don't have time. Um, in a book, after a bit, you know, the publisher, the editor is going to say, oi, you, you're getting off topic. Whereas every now and then, as a storyteller, it's kind of wonderful to go down a rabbit hole and, and explore it and then come back up and say, Pop, here I am, yeah. and then carry on with the main narrative. And actually, that is a much more human way of telling stories and listening to stories than than the other formats I've gone through. Yeah. So I kind of I, and I actually, I mean, I did a podcast here um, called Taking on, um, um, I think it's called Taking on Putin, um, which became my book Killer in the Kremlin. I did the audio book of that. But now, when I to answer, it's a fantastic audio, podcast, that John. Thank you. Um, it was done, um, well, the Russian army, it was started when the Russian army was still 12 miles away from, from where I was recording it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but there's something beautiful about podcasts in they better reflect kind of Neanderthal storytelling. You can't, and you can, you can make cavemen 10,000 years ago one guy starts telling a story, the fire is dying, and everybody's listening. Now, that's what I love doing. And that's what good podcasters love doing. You're telling a story, and people really want to know what's going to happen next. And, and, and I think the, um, the podcast, and also an audio book, best convey that ancient ancient longing for a good story well told i mean we've seen a, a an astronomical growth um in in podcasts about crime and monsters and and it's led us to uh, to how we was introduced via uh, the upcoming event crime con um tell me about any involvement that that the podcast has uh, with with crime con this year well, so um, I, I've been a judge um, uh, for the uh, the book awards. I would I would wanted to be there, but the problem is that we're all waiting for this counter offensive, and and actually um, it, here in Kiev. So I'm I. It's more important for me uh, at the moment for, to be in Kiev than at Crime Con. But I'm very sorry, I'm not at Crime Con. However, I was a judge for the Crime Con book awards, and um, when the winner is going to be announced, um, I'm going to be cheering. Uh, he or she from the rafters. I'm not going to give anything away. That's uh, um, but uh, I wish everybody well. I think it's kind of you know people will sort of scoff at this stuff and say you know why are you all fascinated? Well, because most people are good, most people are ordinary, most people are lovely. Well, some people are lovely. Some people are less lovely than others, obviously. But never mind. And then there is a very very small number of people like Robert Maxwell, like like Jeffrey Epstein like Vladimir Putin, who, who can destroy not just a few lives, but hundreds, or in Putin's case, thousands of lives. And, 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 and it's very important for us as a society to be able to understand these monsters and to what's going on. And I think it's not a, uh, I think it's, it's an incredibly human thing to want to understand that. And so what CrimeCon is, is it takes that, that longing for understanding of the extreme, of the monstrous, and kind of bottles that energy and says, right, if, you if you're into this stuff, 
come to this conference and and you can you know you can binge on it and by the way that is entirely proper now i went to the first one it was great fun it was fascinating you would go from one talk about something about forensic medicine and then you go into some dark rabbit hole and then you listen to some nutter and then you listen to somebody some really good talk about nailing evil bastards and it was completely fascinating um, yeah. and so um and also very much part of this caveman storytelling tradition that I um that I like. I must go and put on my bear skin and light the fire. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean obviously, you know, where where you're at at the moment, you know, you 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 have your your priorities in place for 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 what you're doing. Um but moving forwards, what's what's next for John Sweeney? Oh, fucking hell. What a, ask me an easy question, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I'm not really moving from here I'm, uh, until the war is lost and won. I think Vladimir Putin has lost the war, is losing the war. Um, but I am I want to see um, peace. I want to see Ukraine out of the news, doing its thing, getting on. And then, um, and then we'll see how, how Russia sorts itself out. But I would imagine um, my next thing is actually I want to write a, a, a thriller about the Battle of Kiev, which I, I lived through. Um, and I know I knew people who died in it as well. Um, but also to kind of celebrate the spirit here. And then when I've done that, I want to do um, some more podcasts about other monsters, um, um, wherever they may be. I, I want to have a go at them. I haven't. I kind of miss Africa. I haven't. And I, you know, listen. I understand why I'm. I'm here. It's right for me to be here. But there's a whole world of storytelling out there. Um, I'm worried about the 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 rise and rise and rise of um, of the Chinese Communist Party and what looks to me like Chinese fascism. Those are kind of big stories. But what you really need is a story like Ghislaine Maxwell which is there is a very, very simple, awful, bad fairy story quality to Ghislaine's. So the horror of what she did to people and also to the tragedy of what she did to herself. So there's, so I'm looking for something like that, but I haven't found it yet. John, if people want to keep up to speed with everything that's that, that's going on with you in regards to, to books, podcasts, uh, your, your writing, where's the best place to to keep up to speed with you? Uh, Twitter, if you can bear it. Um, so my Twitter thing is at John Sweeney Raw, R-O-A-R. And um, I've got a web page as well, which is on my Twitter thing, which I keep, which I'm bad at uh, keeping up. So I need to um, to do that. But oh, listen, I, I also, you know, need to um, take the washing out. Um, and, and I need to go drinking tonight because, because you never know when the Russians are going to kill you. So you've got to have a nice drink, you know. Uh, so like, <laughs> but yeah, Twitter's the best place. Um, and um, and bookshops. So lately, I've written um, Hunting Galen, which is the book of the um, and I uh, and I read it too, the audio book. But that's the book of the podcast. Killer in the Kremlin is my book of the podcast taking on Putin. Um, that's been a bestseller that's published by Penguin. Um, um, Hunting Glen is published by Hodder. And then I've written a new book for Penguin, which is coming out uh, next month called July 20th, which is written with Aidan Aslan. Aidan Aslan is, the, is a British uh, soldier, or rather a British chap, who fought with the Ukrainian Marines, was captured by the Russians, and tortured and sentenced to death. And his story is called Putin's Prisoner, and I ghosted it. But um, a publisher wanted me on the cover, so it's by Aidan Aslan with John Sweeney. And that's um, that's coming out on July 20th. Wonderful. 